seems like a like a reasonable guess. I mean, we think that ultimately they're probably not going to taper until sometime early next year, but I think it's going to be a process in terms of communicating about it. Right now, he's clearly not wanting to send any signals, no, you know, talking about talking about it um, or thinking about thinking about it. But I think there will be a process. And, and so in the second half of the year, I think we'll be moving in that direction. It could be fourth quarter. I think that's possible. But our best guess would be that it's going to be early next year. Obviously, the other hot topic of discussion and questioning was on inflation. And he's also sticking to his guns there saying, look, we think it's going to be temporary or transitory. We see it happening because of these bottlenecks, for instance, in the supply chain and the, and the great economic reopening. What do yeah, you think? Number, what, do, do you think that there's a risk of, of a materially higher and more sustained inflation rate coming down the road? Well, it's not our expectation. In fact, we have a pretty similar pattern to the Fed. We think it's core PCE is probably going to 2.4, 2.5% in the April numbers, but then we have it coming down to about 2% by the end of the year because the base effects, the lapping of the weakness last year, that's going to be very transitory. I think we'll see some upward pressure, obviously, in areas of the economy that are really being helped by vaccinations, things like hotels, airline fares, and so forth. But I think that's also going to be fairly transitory. And then other factors like healthcare costs, I think, are probably going to come down somewhat. I mean, healthcare cost inflation at the moment is relatively high, but that's mainly for technical factors that are going to fade. So 2% by the end of the year is our expectation. And in that kind of environment, I think they can wait probably still a while before they taper, let alone uh, signal any rate increases. We don't have that until early 2024, despite the fact that we have a very optimistic growth forecast. What, what are you factoring in uh, in terms of uh, the fiscal side? Are you expecting more stimulus and or tax hikes and uh... If, if we get a surprise a little bit on, on one of those two things, will that influence uh, the leeway the Fed has perhaps uh, later this year? We do expect that the Biden packages that have been presented are going to be passed, at least in part. I mean, our expectation of total spending over the next 10 years is something between three and three and a half trillion dollars. So that's a big headline number, but I think the impact is not nearly as big as the American Rescue Plan that was passed earlier, because it's just stretched over a much longer time period. And we do also expect some of the tax increases to, to go through. So I think in 2024, sorry, in 2022, I would expect a, a negative fiscal impulse to growth. So a pretty substantial slowdown in the growth pace from the very, very rapid pace this year. And I think that's also one reason why the Fed can take their time in terms of moving to the exit. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.